This podcast is about the thematoscopic pattern of circles. When we speak about circles in thematoscopy, we have to differentiate between circles on facial skin and circles on non-facial skin. We will start with circles on non-facial skin. Here on the left side, you see the thematoscopic image of a junctional clock snubus. You don't see circles, but you see a reticular pattern. The reticular pattern comes into being because of hyperpigmentation of basal keratinocytes. And you see a reticular pattern because the radar ridges are narrow and dermal papillae are broad. If the dermal papillae are narrow and the radar ridges are broad, which happens in acanthosis of the epidermis, like here on the right side, you see on non-facial skin circles, like in this dermatofibroma. Here at the periphery, you see pigmented circles. There is acanthosis in dermatofibroma. Again, the junctional nevus, and you can see, if you look very closely, that the reticular pattern consists of circles that touch each other. But the circles are not separate because the radio ridges are so narrow. Here you see the dermatofibroma, and you see that there are solitary circles not touching each other. Why? Because the radio ridges are broad, like in acanthosis in the dermatofibroma. Here again, the sketches A, reticular pattern, B, circles. Given this pathologic demonoscopic correlation, we know that whenever we see circles on non facial skin, we know that there is hyperpigmentation of basal keratinocytes and acanthosis of the epidermis, like in which diagnosis? Severic keratosis. This is a severic keratosis clinically, and here this is the same severic keratosis dermatoscopically, and what you can see is circles and some distorted circles. Distorted means they are ovals or even polygons. Why? Because there is more acanthosis. So circles on non-facial skin are a good clue to seborrheic keratosis because circles indicate acanthosis. Seborrheic keratosis. Another example, clinically, it's easy clinically. Dermatoscopically, what you see, you see circles and some ovals and polygons together with circles, and together with the other clues, you can easily make the diagnosis of severe keratosis. The other clues in this case are white clots, here yellow clots. Severe keratosis. Now let's move to facial skin. Here is a flat pigmented lesion facial skin, and dermatoscopically you see circles, correct. And these circles are different from the circles on non-facial skin. Why? because there are usually no radio ridges on facial skin of uh, older patients. You see circles because there is hyperpigmentation within the follicular epithelium, which is usually the case in lentigo malignant melanoma in the the face, like in this case. So whenever you see a pattern of circles only, and the space between the follicular openings is relatively non-pigmented or hyperpigmented, then this is a good clue to lentigo malignant melanoma in situ on the face. Melanoma in situ. Here is another case, clinically difficult to differentiate lentigo malignant from pigmented actinic keratosis or even solar lentigo. Now here, dermatoscopically, you see circles, mainly gray circles, which means there's a lot of pigment within the follicular epithelium and this indicates usually, if there is only a pattern of circles, early lentigo malignant. Melanoma in situ. Another case here, clinically, a pigmented macule. Dermatoscopically, you see a structuralist pattern, but you also see here circles, which means gray circles, some brown circles, and some semicircles, which are called asymmetric follicular openings. And here also some circles, and these circles are a good clue to lentigo maligna. Melanoma in situ. There is a difference between circles and structures on facial skin, and this difference is usually not captured by the term pseudopigment network. For example, here in this case, demoscopically you see circles. This is a pattern of circles, and it indicates the presence of lentigo maligna. Here in this case, you see structuralist pattern interrupted by follicular openings. This is usually called 
pseudo pigment network, which is a term that I do not recommend to use because it disregards the difference between a pattern of circles, like you've seen before, and a structuralist pattern interrupted by follicular openings. What else do you see here? You see here also some curved lines that indicate a solar lung tiger, which it is. But melanoma in situ on the face may have any pattern, not only circles. Of course, you may also see a pattern of dots, like in this case, and the dots may be arranged around the follicles. This could be a solar lantigo with regression that we call lichen planus like keratosis. This could be melanoma in situ, or this could be pigmented actinic keratosis. If there, is, if there are no circles, it does not exclude melanoma in situ on the face. But if there are circles, it's a good clue to melanoma in situ. Here is another case, clinically difficult, no circles, but dots, and the dots are gray, and the pattern of dots is interrupted by the hyperpigment follicle openings. This could be everything, which means it could be melanoma in situ, it could be pigmented actinic keratosis, or it could be lichen planus like keratosis. So if there are no circles, you can't tell. In this case, it was a lichen planus like keratosis. Thanks for watching.